Maya Tabalenta Millet, known to everyone as May, was born on May 1, 1981, in the southern province of Ilocosur in the Philippines. She was the fifth of six children, and her parents were named Pablito and Noemi Tabalanza. Although her family had humble beginnings, Maya was well educated and excelled in school throughout elementary school, being considered one of the top five students. In 1995, when Maya was 14 years old, she and her family moved to Honolulu, Hawaii. At age 17, she went to work at McDonald's in Pearl Harbor, and it was there that she met Larry Millette. Larry was originally from San Diego, California, but had moved with his family to Hawaii. Despite being considered a calm and intelligent young man, in 1997, he was arrested for assault after being involved in a gang fight. The fact would have occurred in the city of San Diego, and according to some sources, this would be one of the reasons why his parents decided to move there. As soon as she graduated from high school, Maya got into a relationship with Larry, and when she turned 19, they got married. In the meantime, Maya attended the University of Hawaii at Manoa, while Larry was sent to Navy training in the state of Virginia. They later ended up moving to Southern California to start a life together, and Maya chose not to have children until she was sure she would be able to provide for them. She continued her education and entered the University of California in San Diego, where she majored in international studies. After graduating, Maya went on to work as a civil contract specialist at Naval Base San Diego and spent most of her life as a civil servant on the U.S. government. In 2010, she gave birth to her first daughter, Lara May. A year later, in 2011, their second daughter, Mylani, was born. Then, in 2016, she gave birth to her third and final child, Lazarus Tristan. The children were always very attached to their mother, and she tried to dedicate herself as much as possible, giving them the best she could. Maya loved to travel with her children, especially on school field trips, as well as participating in various other activities with them. Overall, she has always been a dedicated mother who would move mountains for the well-being of her three children. Despite a busy schedule, juggling work and family, Maya had many hobbies, particularly outdoor activities. She loved hiking, biking, traveling, and camping with her family. She also liked to play the guitar and piano, something she learned by herself, and she even created a YouTube channel where she posted covers and some original songs. According to close people, Maya was a welcoming and charitable person. She always had a big heart, especially with children, and didn't think twice about helping anyone in need. She tried to educate her children about the importance of helping others, and when she visited the Philippines with them, she bought various school supplies and sweets for her children to give to poor residents of the rural community. As for Larry, their marriage cooled down over the years, as he never had time for his family, and when he was off duty, he spent the day at home complaining and drinking beer. Then, in early 2020, the relationship deteriorated for good, and Larry became controlling and paranoid, even accusing Maya of having an extramarital relationship. As the months passed, the two seemed like two strangers sharing the same bed. By December of that year, Maya had decided to divorce Larry, and was taking every step to formalize the separation legally and as friendly as possible. Needless to say, Larry didn't like this one bit, and a friend of hers said that Maya confessed that Larry was becoming violent, to the point where she began to fear for her safety and that of her children. When the situation became unbearable, a friend of hers offered his vacant house in a gated community so that Maya could stay there and have some peace. On January 7, 2021, Maya Millet disappeared without a trace. She was last seen around 5 p.m. and her husband was the last person to see her. The man said that after they got into an argument, she just walked out of the house, leaving the kids with him and saying she needed to cool off a bit. She was only reported missing three days later, on January 10th, after she failed to attend her daughter's birthday party, something that left her friends and family worried, since it was Maya herself who had organized everything days before, and they knew she would never miss her daughter's birthday. Larry claimed he had no idea where the woman was and that she wasn't answering his calls. Weirdest of all, Maya's car was still in the driveway, 
Her credit card hadn't been used, and her phone only went to voicemail. An official police statement was issued, and she was listed as a missing person. During investigations, her entire family, including Larry, cooperated with the police, and Larry mentioned that she liked to walk and explore the trails behind and around her house, implying that she might have had an accident. Meanwhile, Maya's friends and family organized vigils, and search parties were assembled to calm the area, but Larry didn't participate, claiming he had to look after the children. On January 23, a warrant was issued to search Maya's home, but the details of that search were not made public. On February 4th, Larry stops cooperating with the police and hires a lawyer. Everyone found the attitude very strange, and Maya's sister, Maricris, said that he had been distancing himself from the family little by little since his sister disappeared. The next day, February 5th, a press conference was held with the family and the police, and they asked anyone with information about Maya's whereabouts to come forward. Then, a search party was formed around the Glammy Sand Dunes, where Maya's brother-in-law, Richard, says someone tipped him off that they saw the woman walking around the area the day she disappeared. Police, family members and volunteers searched the site for hours, but nothing relevant was found. Later, the woman's family hired a private detective to work on the case full-time. On March 17, a TV program contacted Larry and asked for an interview with him live. The man agreed, and on the day of the interview, he stated that he was not worried about his wife disappearing because she went out frequently, drank a lot, and stayed at friends' houses for days. These statements, however, were refuted by several of the woman's friends and family. Maya's lawyer contacted the police to inform them that the day she disappeared, she had a very important meeting scheduled with him. According to the lawyer, it was at this meeting that they would resolve the last penny issues in the divorce and properly sharing process. But minutes before the meeting, the woman sent him a message canceling. The private detective hired by Maya's family discovered that Larry had also hired a private detective months earlier to surveil the woman and find out if she really was having an affair. A few days after these revelations, police received an anonymous call that said Larry had hired a man to take the life of his wife's alleged lover. The anonymous source also said that the amount agreed between the two was $20,000. On April 8, the police announced that they had received the video and audio recordings from the condominium where Maya was living. In one of these recordings, it is possible to hear what would be shots being fired, but nothing suspicious is caught by the cameras. So, a search warrant is carried out at Larry's uncle's house, which is where he was living. Four agencies, including the FBI, joined the police to carry out these searches. The FBI discovered that Maya had fled a restraining order against Larry for being threatened with a firearm. Larry had served in the Navy, and he had 16 firearms, four U.S. passports, a government ID card, and hundreds of rounds of ammo. In May, a second search warrant was served on the house where Larry lived with Maya and their children before the separation, but the result of that search was not made public, as the police feared it would hamper the investigations. The officers used a 3D room scanner in their home, a device often used to digitally map crime scenes. They also used black lines to look for traces of blood. Following an anonymous tip, police carried out searches on a gold field that had been abandoned since 2018. The same region had already been surveyed previously, after Maya's GPS pointed out that she walked through the region on the day she disappeared. But just like the previous search, nothing was found. On June 16, 2021, Larry, who was now considered the prime suspect in the case, was taken to the police station to give a statement. He was there for about six hours before being released, but officers said he was banned from leaving the city until the inquest was complete. Later, the detective said that Larry was a potential suspect, because in addition to having several weapons and having threatened Maya with one of them, the detectives also found some messages and emails that he sent to his wife. In many of these messages, Larry threatened to take her life. In July, again in the house where Larry lived with Maya, and again, the police have not released the result of the search, but they must have found something of great relevance, since on October 19, 2021, Larry Millette was arrested. Afterwards, 
a press conference is held by the police detailing the investigation into Maya's case and the reasons for Larry's arrest. Many new details are revealed, and the evidence they have against Larry turns out to be much greater than anyone thought. On the man's computer, investigators discovered some strange searches. These searches would have been done days before Maya's disappearance. He would have contacted a supposed witch where he hired her services to bewitch Maya and make her love him again. He also researched which pharmacies sold a specific type of tranquilizer. With Larry arrested and Maya missing, custody of the couple's children was rotated between the paternal grandparents and Maya's sister. A few days after Larry's arrest, his lawyer filed a writ of habeas corpus, but it was denied by the judge in the case. On January 7, 2022, it had been one year since Maya Mulet disappeared and nothing had yet been found. Larry was still claiming innocence. In February 2022, more details were revealed about Larry's contact with the alleged witch. In the meantime, his parents sued the police department, claiming that their rights were violated during the search of their home in May 2021, and that their grandchildren were removed from school without their permission. Then, Larry's lawyer requested a psychiatric examination of his client, and so, the legal process was paralyzed until the psychiatric report was ready. While they wait for an outcome to the case, Maya's family organizes meetings, vigils, and protests in a park that she used to go to. They are certain that Larry is responsible for her disappearance. The authorities also believe that Larry is responsible, but only circumstantial evidence links him to the crime, and the prosecution fears that after the psychiatric report, he could be released due to lack of evidence or even, if he wants, sent to a trial. The couple's children, since June that year, were under care of their maternal aunt, as Larry's parents claimed not to be able to take care of them. Currently, Larry is in a penitentiary where his fate awaits. Alright folks, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching until the end, best wishes, and I see you next time.